Hello, Ron Sipsik here. This is the third part of a five-part series on some basic principles in supply and demand. Today we're going to take a look at the difference between a shortage and a surplus, and we're going to explain how these disequ disequilibrium conditions occur. We'll begin with a shortage, and we'll look at the picture on the left. We see a typical market model with a supply curve and a demand curve. We immediately notice that sellers and buyers are at cross purposes. When the, so when the uh, price goes up, the seller wants to produce more. When the price goes up, the buyer wants to buy less. When the price comes down, the buyer wants to buy more. But when the price comes down, the seller wants to sell less. So we immediately notice when we look at a supply, supply and demand curve model that the buyers and the sellers are at cross purposes. However, there is a place where the market is in a state of balance or equilibrium. And that place is the equilibrium price. And at that equilibrium price, we have what we call an equilibrium quantity. Now, what is true about the equilibrium quantity is that the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. So, for instance, let's say that this is the corn market, and the corn market is in equilibrium. Most of the time, markets are not in equilibrium. In fact, they're rarely in equilibrium. And so equilibrium is not a common condition. The reason we talk about it is because this is where markets move. In understanding where markets move, we can explain where they're going. And if we can explain where they're going, we can make predictions. So let's suppose that this picture on the left is the corn market. And there is a supply of corn and a demand of corn, many, many sellers of corn, many, many buyers of corn. And let's say this market is in equilibrium at $6 a bushel. Now, at $6 a bushel, what is true about the quantity supplied? Well, if we read that price off the supply curve, we get the quantity supplied. Let's say this is 50 million bushels. But notice at that same price, the quantity demanded is 50 million bushels. So notice there's no difference between the quantity supplied and quantity demanded. The market is in what is called a state of balance, or what we call a state of equilibrium. I quickly add that equilibrium is not common in the marketplace. We study it not because it's common, but because this is where the market system tends to try to gravitate to. Now, who sets prices in a market system? Sellers set prices. And sellers do not see supply curves and demand curves. So sellers do not know where the equilibrium price is for a product on any given day. To have that information, you would need to know who all the sellers are, who all the buyers are, and how each and every one of those parties respond to price. No one has that information. So the equilibrium price is both an unseen price and an invisible price. And it's very difficult for, let's say, a basketball player to score a goal to shoot a ball through the hoop if they can't see the hoop and the hoop is moving. In essence, price setters are shooting at a moving target. The equilibrium price is not only invisible to them, it is a moving target. Now you'll notice in this analysis we don't move the equilibrium price because we hold the supply curve and the demand curve constant. In a later lesson we're going to actually shift these curves and we'll see that the equilibrium price moves. So again, price setters are shooting at an invisible and moving equilibrium price. Now let's change colors here and I'd like to show you what happens if price setters set the price too low. Let's say that price setters are offering sell bids on corn equal to $4 a bushel. So they don't know that 6 is equilibrium. They think maybe 4 is equilibrium, and 4 is what they want to sell corn at. But notice that a price of 4 is too low. How do I know it's too low? It's below equilibrium. Notice that this very low price for corn, buyers of corn want to buy, relatively speaking, a lot of corn. 
But at this low price of corn, sellers of corn only want to produce QS. So let's say that QS is oh, 35 million bushels. So producers want to produce an offer for sale today, 35 million bushels of corn. But buyers are willing to purchase, oh, let's say 65 million bushels at that price. Well, there is a shortage, in this case, of 30 million. Think about this. If the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied, if this is 65 million and this is 35 million, then there is excess quantity demanded. And in essence, we would say that there is a shortage, a shortage equal to 30 million. So the difference between QD and QS represents the shortage. Is this a stable condition? Well, no, because what's going to happen here is these sell orders, uh, these, these offerings will be taken up very quickly. And in fact, many, many, many people who want to buy corn at $4 will be left out of, uh, left out of the market because they can't find someone to sell them corn at four dollars a bushel. So shortages are unstable. Sellers are running out of things too soon, too quickly, and therefore will quickly get the idea that they need to raise their price. Not only that they need to, they can raise their price. Well what happens when price setters raise their price? I'll change the color here and we'll show the adjustments. When price setters realize they're running a shortage, they're going to want to increase their price. As they increase their price, we learned earlier, that causes movement up the supply curve. So producers are going to want to produce more corn. So farmers are going to want to bring more corn to market. You say, well, how do they do this? They can't plant corn real quickly and grow more corn. Well, we need to know that farmers are always holding inventories of corn, and they're trying to choose when they want to sell it. If the price of corn is going up this month, they're going to be will more willing to release corn from their inventory of corn. And they're going to be more interested in producing more corn in the next production cycle, in the next planting cycle. However, if the price of corn is going up, we're also moving up the demand curve, which means the buyer the buyers of corn are wanting to buy less. So notice, as the price of corn goes up, we move up the supply curve, up the demand curve. The production of corn increases. Why? Profit motive. Higher prices, higher production. Why? Higher prices, higher profit. However, as the price goes up, buyers of corn are not going to want to buy as much corn. They're going to experience what we call an income effect and a substitute effect and or a substitute effect and some of these buyers will drop out. Now when will the price stop rising? The price will stop rising when we get to equilibrium because at equilibrium the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. So we can summarize this model, the shortage model, very easily with this set of, uh, the, with this sequence. We can say that a shortage, a shortage which is caused by the price being what? Too low a shortage will lead to a higher price. So notice, higher prices are a signal, higher prices are a signal that the price, uh, that the market is experiencing a shortage and that sellers should raise their price. When that price goes up, two things happen. Buyers are motivated to buy less corn sellers are motivated to bring more corn to market. Now this, it, it, you, we can see right here that buyers and sellers move in opposite directions with respect to the price. But notice, they're not moving away from each other, they're actually moving closer to each other. So price also serves as a motivator. Price motivates a change in behavior. Buyers buy less, sellers want to produce more, and notice this is exactly what the doctor ordered. The higher price corrects the shortage by what? By motivating buyers to buy less in a world of scarcity, motivating producers to produce more in a world of scarcity. Now, let's go ahead and look at the opposite side. Let's look at a scenario where the price has been set too high 
by the price setters. So again, let's keep in mind that price setters do not see the equilibrium price. The equilibrium price is unseen to the price setters. So let's say this is PE. Again, we'll start out at six dollars and we'll read down and we'll get the equilibrium quantity which is let's say 50 million. Now let's say that price setters set the price too high. They don't see the equilibrium price and they come in above equilibrium. What, what leads us to say the price is too high? Well, the price is above equilibrium. So let's say that farmers come out, sellers of corn come out, and they want to offer corn at $8 a bushel. Well, at $8 a bushel, they're going to be willing to supply more corn. In other words, the production of corn will be quite high, let's say $65 million. But at a price of $8 a bushel, buyers of corn are not going to want to buy as much corn. Let's say 35 million bushels. So what we see, there's once again disequilibrium. The quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. QS is greater than QD. 65 million supplied is greater than what? 35 million demanded. And we can say that there is a surplus. Let me write this out, a surplus equal to 30 million. So we're producing corn in a world of scarcity and we're selling it in a market where we're selling, offering more corn for sale than what people want to buy. Now this is actually wasteful. This can't continue. In a world of scarcity, you don't want producers overproducing and making products that are not going to end up getting sold. This is wasteful. In fact, when you make inventory and don't sell it, this represents the use of resources that could have been used for another product. There's an opportunity cost. We could have taken those resources and used them for other things. So making things and not selling them is not the look we're going for. When surpluses occur, price setters know they're not maximizing profits by running surpluses. So what they're going to want to do is they're going to want to lower their price. Let me just get that arrow there. There we go. As they lower their price, price setters lower their price, we're moving down the demand curve and buyers of corn are going to become more and more interested in corn. But as the price of corn falls, the profits on corn fall. Again, we're holding cost constant. We haven't moved the supply curve. So we're moving along the supply curve. The cost is remaining constant, but the price is falling, which means the profits are falling which means what? Production is going to fall. Producers are not going to be as interested in bringing this to market. Where is the market heading? Once again, it's heading where? Towards equilibrium, where these two variables, quantity supplied and quantity demanded, are equal. So we can then say that a surplus which is caused by a high price, the price is too high. Listen, there doesn't have to be a shortage or surplus of anything. Nothing has to be overproduced or underproduced if the price is right. That's a key economic idea. There doesn't have to be a surplus or shortage of anything providing price setters get the price right. So surpluses are going to lead price setters to lower their prices. Again, price is a signal. It tells people what's going on in the market. People don't see the market model that we're looking at. Market models are only for econ students. They help econ students see with their mind's eye what goes on in markets. So price setters don't actually see market models. They see inventory levels. They see customers. They see, they see profit and loss statements. But they don't see the models we're now looking at. So if my price is too high, I'll know that because my inventory levels are too high. When that occurs, I'm going to want to lower my price, and that will motivate me to lower my production. I'm a producer. I want to maximize profits. So if I'm not as profitable, I don't want to do as much as 
do much of what is unprofitable. You don't want to do lots of things that are unprofitable in life. You want to do things that are profitable. This is true for owners of businesses, workers, consumers, whatever you want to talk about. Now, what's going to happen when the price of corn falls? Well, buyers of corn are going to be more interested in corn. And so the quantity demand will increase while the quantity supplied is decreasing and they're going to move towards each other towards an equilibrium point. So notice markets, at least under the assumptions we've made so far, are self-correcting mechanisms. High, lower prices indicate that the market is experiencing a what? Surplus. And then those lower prices motivate, I'll just use the yellow here, motivate, motivate, okay, well, you get the idea. They motivate producers to change their behavior. Sellers sell less, buyers produce more, and notice this is exactly what the doctor ordered. The market moves towards equilibrium. In the next lesson, actually the next two lessons, we're going to look at what causes shortages and surpluses. How do we get into a position where the market's experienced a shortage or a surplus? That's coming in the next two segments.